10 years after the release of The Professional, members of the cast and crew were living in such diverse cities as New York, Paris, and Los Angeles. To celebrate the movie, they participated in a very special long-distance reunion, a virtual gathering to remember the film they had made a decade ago. Our reunion begins in Paris, France, the home of the professional's producer, Patrice Ledoux. Ledoux recalls how Léon, the film's central character, was first inspired by the role Jean Reno had played in the director's previous film, La Femme Nikita. With Luc Besson, we were uh, preparing the fifth element. It was three or four years that we were working on, and it was too long for Luc. So suddenly he decided that he had to direct something anyway, because uh, fifth element was way too far. So he said, you know, we stopped Nikita with his character with Jean. Why not take him and, and make a kind of spin-off of it? Eh? And that's uh, the way it started. So in a, in a few months, uh, Luke wrote the script with this character and shot this film just to wait for the fifth element. <laughs> so I was with Luke Besson, okay, he was my fiancé. And he was writing the script of the professional, of Leon. He said, we're gonna, we're gonna invite him for dinner, but we're not gonna tell him why. And at the end of the dinner, Luke said, Jean, I have a, a present for you. And I was filming. And Luke told me, are you filming? Are you filming? Okay, we go, one, two, three. And he put the present in front of uh, Jean Reno. And Jean Reno thought, what is that? Chocolate, whatever. And he opened the box and he saw Leon script of Luc Besson and I, I was filming and I was shaking like that and Jean Reno couldn't couldn't put the head up he was looking at that and he his eyes was on the, the script he was starting to cry and he didn't want to show up that he was crying and when he when he show show up the face he looked into Luke and he was crying and he said I'm already ready When I first read the script for The Professional, I knew that my greatest challenge was going to be trying to find a little girl who could play Matilda. Um, Gary Oldman and Jean Reno were both set before Luke came to me with the project. And after reading that script, I just knew that that movie was nothing without the casting of Matilda being perfect. I don't think Luke fully understood that at first, how big a challenge it was going to be to find parents who would let their 11-year-old daughter play this part. So I started bringing in actresses. Luke was in Paris, and I was in New York. And I was doing it all on videotape and sending videotapes to him in Europe. And the first wave of girls were all 15 to 17 who I prayed one of them would be diminutive enough to believably be adolescent. And Luke called from Paris fuming, saying, you send me the girls who know sex. I want the girl who thinks she knows sex, but doesn't know sex. So I brought Natalie Portman in. He said to her, I want you to imagine your whole family, I have to use the French accent, because that's what, I want you to imagine your whole family is shot. Your father is dead in the living room. Your mother is in the bathtub. Your teenage sister, she's uh, dead on the floor. And your baby brother is killed under the bed. And after he said the thing about her baby brother, Natalie just started weeping. If you couldn't stand them, why are you crying? Because they killed my brother. What the hell did he do? 
four years old. He never used to cry. He just used to sit next to me and cuddle. And we knew then that there was no other choice. No other candidate could have done what Natalie did. When I realized that I had to go to New York to stay in New York four months and a half for the shooting of Leon, you know, I was uh, amazed. It was like a big dream. New York, the buildings, the history of New York, you know, Woody Allen, everything. One thing that was really exciting for me was to go to America to shoot part of the film. Matilda's apartment was filmed in a real building in New York. And we combined those shots with the hallway and the stairwell of the Chelsea Hotel, and then we made the connection in editing. I'll always remember shooting the scene on the roof of the building, with Central Park in the background. It was magnificent to film. It was sunny, the light was a little golden. There was Central Park, behind with its deep greens. I polarized the image a little to boost the colors some more. It's really a great pleasure to have New York for your scenery for a cameraman. When we finished shooting in New York, we went back to Paris to shoot the remaining interiors. Living in Paris was so amazing. I had been there as like a little kid, but I had, didn't really remember it. So it was such a fun experience because I was living with my mom in this apartment and we just, we would have such a good time on weekends. We would, you know, go to all the museums and it was like just the most beautiful, most magical place in the world as a little kid. And um, I remember we'd go to the museums and my mom's an artist, so we'd get clay and then bring it back. We'd, you know, go to the Rodin Museum and then come back and make little like figures. And I remember I made, I have a little thing that I still have um, of Jean's head, cause he has such like a sculptural face, you know, his whole, mm -hmm. the shape of his head. It's. Um, really incredible, and I have this little thing still that I made, you know, inspired by Rodin when I was 12 years old. The challenge was actually to, to, to do Matilda, to help this little girl like from New Jersey that was like absolutely pretty and gorgeous to become Matilda. So I decided to test on, uh, on Luke himself, um, how far we could go with the look of Natalie. And um, that would be definitely giving me the exact moment where I should keep it this border or going further. So I decided to hide in the corridor and I sent Natalie from the bedroom down there to the main living room. And the only thing I was focusing was the eyes of Luc Besson. <laughs> And that would tell me the true reaction to how we see for the first time Natalie. And that was beautiful. I have to say that was just beautiful. The way Luke was glowing, it was just like perfect for me because it was the answer I was looking for. Magali was just unbelievable with the clothes. I mean, I had no idea of you know, I was doing baby tees and little barrettes, like I was dressing like a little baby at that time. And she just had this great, you know, color and, and sense of cool that, you know, I can never match in my own life. So she set a standard that will shame me forever, but she's, she's just fantastic. In the scene with the knife, um, I mean, for me, that was the acting challenge of, you know, of my life up to that point. Uh, and I, I, I just tried to make it as simple as I possibly could. One moment, please. I'll connect you with the detective. All right. No. Detective Jefferson, may I help you? I'll call you back. Relax. I got half a balloon sitting on those kisses over here. Hadn't been cut yet. Go ahead, take your chairs. The movement with the knife 
in the scene we had Frank and myself has to be slow and has to disappear. And that's more going into the technical situation, trying to feel what they want to translate with the movement and the light. But it was a, a very nice scene because suddenly you can see that Leon can appear in your life and disappear from your life like a, like a shadow. The one thing that I look at, it, that after that, there's a sigh that I do when he leaves, that I always wish that I could have done better. Uh, I listen to it over and over, and I say, I'm almost there, but not quite. So if you're listening, Luke, give me another film so I can get that sigh right. <sighs> kind of fallen in love with you? Uh, you know, I met Luke, I was 12 years old. Um, I was with somebody else at this time, a friend of him, but I fell in love when I was 15 with Luke. So for me, Leon is a story, it doesn't, of course it doesn't shock me because it was uh, my story. It's the first time for me, you know? How do you know it's love if you've never been in love before? Because I feel it. Usually we talk about the, the men who always love a young woman, but we don't believe it's true when it comes from a girl too. But it's true, you know? It's not because we are, we are 13 years old that we cannot love someone. How about a kiss? in the movies. Oh. Yes. I know that it has been a, a problem for the United States, a problem, let's say, a question. It's not for us, you know, we... Uh, the relationship between uh, this man, adult, and this 11 years old girl didn't shock for us because, first of all, on the shooting, when Jean Reno was asking Luke, but what it is, what is my character? I don't understand. And Luke says, you are 14, you are 14, you are 14 years old. That's it. What are you doing? I'm going to kiss you. But you stop, please. Come on, just a kiss. Jean was directed in a way where he had to be persuaded that he was 14 years old. She was 11. So it was a perfect match, you know? And in our mentality, it's not a problem. There is that scene in the movie where he, he comes to see the father and ask him for, uh, for the money. And so it, he's doing all that thing around the furniture with his finger. You're a Mozart fan. I love him too. But for this kind of work, he's a little bit light. And that stuff, if you look at all the takes, the first time he didn't do it. <clears throat> but for this kind of work, too light. looking good. And then the second take is bringing that back a little bit more. For this kind of work, it's a little light, you know? Then everything is evolving and it's so interesting to look at. I find him too light. It's too sweet. Like choosing in between the best and the better, and it's, you never have anything you want to trash. It's, it's incredible. I think that Luke is the first director that I've worked with who operates the camera himself. I think it gives him a real intimacy with the actors. Nothing is the same after you've killed someone. Your life is changed forever.
He can talk to you in the middle of a take, in the middle of a dialogue. He can say, move a little bit to the left. I don't see you. Do that. That means a real navigation together, like two birds. Sometimes Lux does one thing that not a lot of directors does. It's just like do a take and keep going and going without stopping. And all, all the film goes into the take, but that's where you grab the most beautiful emotions. Don't give a shit about sleeping there. Want love or death. I think having a director who's so engaged and so passionate and so in there with everything that's going on is, you know, rare. Because if there is just a little bit of love in you, think that in a few minutes you'll regret you never said anything. Just makes everything work because the person who is giving the commands is working harder than anyone else there, you know, and is more passionate than anyone else there. So there's really no excuse but to just do your absolute best work. I love you, Leah. The bathroom was very tiny. It was just Luke, the camera, and Gary walking in, and I was in the bathtub. So it was a very tiny, because it was a real bathroom. They had this fabulous man named Al. So on the set, I found out I was totally naked, and I was going to be wired. So Al had to take my breasts, because he thought they were an impediment, and wrap them around and pull them apart with an ace bandage. We went in the room, and he said, OK, this is the rifle. Let me hold it. It was very heavy. And he said, OK, I want you to get used to the sound. And he did the sound, and then he said, OK, now I'm going to shoot at you. I want you to know what it feels like to be shot at. So I got in the tub, and totally naked, totally wired, and uh, they made bubbles. And then Gary practiced coming in the door and pointing, coming in the door and pointing. He was so worried that I would be scared, and he was scared. And so he took his time, and then when we did action, of course, he went for it, and we both tried not to you know, react, because the problem is, obviously, you can't react. He can't because he's supposed to be the guy, and I can't because I'm the victim. I'm not supposed to know. So it was really wonderful, and it was frightening, but it was great because they're professional. Luke wanted to do a shot of Gary Oldman emptying his gun in me in frustration and sort of just clicking an empty gun into my back. Click, 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 click. Now, there's big issues about gun safety and, and when you put a gun that close to a person's back, you gotta make sure the gun is empty. So they had gone through the motions, the gun was empty, Gary made sure the gun was empty, they were gonna stick the gun at my back. Close up, camera's moving down, you know, Luke was holding the camera as well, holding it, coming down on me, seeing the gun right up against my back, and you see, and I'm laying there dead, you know, holding my breath, click, 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 boom! The gun goes off! <laughs> Gary throws the gun up in the air, he goes, what the fuck? Because he's like, he thought he shot me, now I'm not moving, because Luke doesn't say cut. So I'm not moving, and I'm there, and they're thinking, Mike, Mike, are you all right? But I still don't hear cut, so I'm still not moving. Mike, Mike, are you all right? Cut, cut, cut. Now, thinking about it, I bet you Luke did that on purpose. I bet you he wanted to see that reaction. And I wouldn't put it past him. I wouldn't be surprised. Stan, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? He's dead. But he ruined my suit. I know, but he's dead. There is a, a scene that is in a long version of the, the professional where she goes out dressed with a dress that he offered her and, and she has some makeup on and she asks him if he wants to be uh, his, her first lover. You know, girl's first time is very important. It determines the rest of her life sexually. We went to do the first preview, but then when that scene arrived, they all started to laugh but just giggling because they were annoyed and uncomfortable about the situation. When I like it the first time. 
and uh, we came out of the movie and everybody was laughing what is this silly movie and Luke was uh, on dit détruit? Um, he was destroyed I could see his face oh la la it was absolutely obvious we had to cut that because it was not perceived by the audience as something possible they, they were uncomfortable they didn't know how to, to how to take that you know they, they were very very uncomfortable so we shot we, we cut 14 minutes I think something like that and uh, and the next test was great Luke always has great ideas about camera work. I mean, he always tries to do really interesting effects, particularly in action scenes. His decision to follow the rocket with the camera posed some very interesting technical challenges. The rocket was on a wire, and the camera was mounted on a little monorail which was hidden in the floor. For the kind of explosion that we filmed in Spanish Harlem, and I actually don't think we would have been able to do that in a more upscale neighborhood in New York, we used, if I remember correctly, about five or six cameras, which Luke placed himself, one after the other. We evacuated part of the street, and then we did the explosion. It was absolutely incredible. Incroyable, quoi. Among the films I, sh I produced with Luke, uh, for, for me, it's probably my favorite. Uh. It was my first long feature I have ever edited. And as every first time, I will remember it forever. The film is moving, the film is entertaining, but I think the film, above all, holds up over these years, and it's a film that will last a long time. I love anything that comes out real, and this is a classic because it still has heart. It's, it's a good memory, because maybe because the, the story looks like mine with Luke, uh, but of course, I really love this movie. A crossroads in a, in a good sense, because uh, I could show a different color of my acting. It's just an amazing thing to have been able to have been a part of. Perhaps one of the most memorable behind-the-scenes moments actually took place on the day that Natalie Portman filmed her very last scene. This is what happens on a movie set when the cast and crew have truly had a great time working together. Hey! 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 